Hey, Kevin with MC Rider. We're going to do something a little different this week. I recently passed one year of ownership with my Honda Goldwing, and I thought it'd be a good time to give you some of my thoughts on the Goldwing. So in this video, we'll look at some of my likes and dislikes of the 2018 Honda Goldwing Tour DCT that you see in the background there. And no, it won't be making toilet paper at the end of this video. Hey, my name's Kevin, and I release a weekly video on road skills or road strategy here on MC Rider to help make you a better rider. If you have no idea what I was talking about when I said the Goldwing wouldn't be making toilet paper, you missed the April Fool's video that I released, but I've got a link for that in the description or up here that you can click on to get caught up. This week, however, we'll be talking about my 2018 Honda Goldwing Tour DCT get a lot of questions about this bike and I thought it would be best to put some of my ideas down in a video and answer the questions here. This is not a true review but just some of my likes and dislikes of the motorcycle and a recommendation at the end whether I think you should buy or not buy. Your first question may be, well what does DCT stand for in the Honda Goldwing DCT? DCT stands for dual clutch transmission. It's essentially an automatic transmission for motorcycles though you can still manually control the shift if you want to with but without the clutch. So when the motorcycle is in drive it shifts smoothly up and down the seven gears as you ride. When you pull up to a stoplight it shifts back down through the gears into first and shifts back up through the gears as you leave the light. At stops all you have to do is manipulate the brakes and the gold wing takes care of all the shifting. A DCT is something that Honda has been using on motorcycles for a few years now. The DCT on the Gold Wings, their third generation of this transmission that Honda's developed, and I think it's ideal for this class of motorcycles. The Gold Wing, after all, is a touring motorcycle. You buy a Gold Wing to go places, to see sights, carry some luggage, maybe a passenger, and not be worn out at the end of the day when you stop. You can buy a Gold Wing with or without the DCT, but in my opinion, the DCT only makes this a better motorcycle. It may be the best option I've ever put on a motorcycle. It really is that good. It works well in stop and go city traffic as you're not getting sore clutch hand. It's also great for travel because it's less one less thing that you have to manipulate when you're tired at the end of the day. I also think it makes the motorcycle safer in emergency situations. So let me explain why I think it makes it safer. First, the Goldwing DCT is always in the proper gear, so it's impossible to stall this motorcycle. The DCT takes squeezing the clutch and downshifting out of the equation in an emergency braking situation. And if you think you're an experienced rider and you don't need that benefit, you might be surprised. There are only so many things that the human mind can do at one time, and having the DCT frees up the brain cycles when you need it most in an emergency. Is really a nice feature to have. I'm sold on it, though I'm still old school. I still like running the motorcycle through the gears. But if you said I could only have one motorcycle from here on out, it probably would have a DCT on it. The only downside to the DCT is I didn't like it downshifting mid-corner or when I needed to perform a tight maneuver. But you can get around this by selecting the proper gear on your own before the corner and getting the motorcycle down into first gear before a tight maneuver. Even though the motorcycle is happy to select gears for you, remember you're still the pilot, so get the bike in the proper gear that you need. You can do this at any time with the paddle shifters or with the optional foot shifter that I really like. The foot shifter over the paddle shifters because I already had the muscle memory in place to shift up and down with the foot shifter. So my normal routine on corners where I've learned that it's likely to downshift mid-corner is to click down a gear or two before the corner with the foot shifter and have the suspension settled and the braking done before leaning the motorcycle into the corner. It works great and then I just let the motorcycle shift back up through the gears as I exit the corner and roll on the throttle. Aside from the DCT, my favorite feature of the Gold Wing has got to be the engine. It's a six cylinder 1833cc water cooled flat six beast. I used to own a Scion XD car. My girls and I called that the little red car. 
the Honda Goldwing has the same size engine in it that my little red car did. This engine's happy in town, it's happy two up, it'll cruise all day on the highway, and if you put the Goldwing in sport mode, it'll pull your arms out of socket from a stoplight. It's Honda smooth, but it has a little growl to it too when you get on the throttle, but being such a large engine, it keeps all that weight low on the chassis, and instead of working against you when you're riding, all that weight works in your favor when the motorcycle starts rolling, even at a crawl. It's such a balanced, smooth motorcycle to ride. Because of its size and weight and power, Goldwing's definitely not a beginner's bike by any means, but for an experienced rider, it's really an easy motorcycle to ride. It does weigh a hefty 800 pounds, but it carries that weight low, and once in motion, all that weight goes away. Even off the side stand, it doesn't feel like a heavy motorcycle because the center of gravity on this bike is so low. So some of the other features that I think make this a great option for a touring motorcycle are ABS, traction control, cruise control, power windshield, keyless bag entry and start, heated grips, heated driver and passenger seat, electronic riding modes, electronically adjustable suspension and windshield, wide clear view mirrors, it's got reverse when you need to back that 800 pounds out of a parking spot, and it has Apple CarPlay. I know the Goldwing is classified as a touring motorcycle, but there's no reason why you can't enjoy all of these features if this is your daily motorcycle to commute back and forth to work on. As I said, the bike's happy to ride in any road situation, in town or out on the highway. Apple CarPlay is an awesome feature of this motorcycle, with a few caveats. When it's working right, it's the best navigation and entertainment option I've used on a motorcycle. Easy access to maps and navigation just by pushing a button and asking Siri. If you want, you can make and receive phone calls, send text messages, or find the nearest gas station all without taking your eyes off the road. Now, personally, I don't like using it for a phone calls while I'm riding because I think that's too distracting for me. But I have sent short text messages hands-free, like telling my wife I'm on my way home. I've asked it to pull up certain music, sent navigation instruction, ask about the weather, and a whole lot more. The interface with Siri is a one-button push on the left-hand grip, and from then on, it's simple commands to do all the things that the Goldwing is capable of doing without needing to look down and take your hands off the hand grips. In order to use CarPlay, you need two things. You need an iPhone and a Bluetooth headset. Oh, there's a workaround for the Bluetooth in your helmet. If you want, I'll get into that in a minute. But this brings me to the downside of CarPlay as it exists on the Goldwing. In order to get this to work, you have to start the Goldwing, let the on-bike OS get going, turn on the Bluetooth device, wait for it to connect to the Goldwing, and then, and only then, plug in the phone. If you do all this correctly, it'll connect to CarPlay about 75% of the time. If it doesn't connect, then you're restarting the headset or unplugging the phone, plugging it back in and doing this dance until it all gets in sync. Every time you shut off the motorcycle, you're going through this dance again, and unless you get lucky, 75% of the time and it connects right. Now, I have CarPlay in my truck and it connects every time. Doesn't matter if the phone is already plugged in, when I start the truck, it just works. Now, I'm not sure why it has these faults on the Goldwing, but I think it has to do with Senna. And I think it's related to the fact that CarPlay won't work on the Goldwing if a Bluetooth device is not detected. Even though the Goldwing has speakers built in, you can't activate CarPlay if the system doesn't recognize a Bluetooth device first. So if the batteries on your Senna are dead for the day, you're not getting CarPlay for the rest of the day either. You can get the whole system going and then switch to the external speakers built into the Goldwing, but you have to have Bluetooth going first, which leads me to the workaround I found. You can buy this little device on Amazon, 17 bucks on Amazon. You connect that to the Bluetooth in the Goldwing. With that done, it allows you to play music or get navigation instructions through the speakers built into the Goldwing with no headset involved. And for some reason, this little piece of hardware connects more consistently than my expensive Bluetooth headset from Senna. 
But with those frustrations aside, when it is working, it's the best system I've ever used for on-road direction, for audio entertainment, and if used correctly, it doesn't greatly hinder your concentration on the road. The other things that are a source of frustration for me with the motorcycle are the difficulty on working on this bike yourself. And part of that just comes from the design with any motorcycle that has a lot of plastic fairings on it and the gold wings covered in plastic. However, most of the maintenance or even adding some of the factory options to this motorcycle is far more complex than any bike I've ever owned. And I think some engineer walked into Honda in the boardroom with a new air filter design set it on the table, and then the team decided to build the new gold wing around the air filter. If you want to change air filters or spark plugs, man, you better have a mask and snorkel because you're going in deep to perform even the most basic of maintenance on this motorcycle. And that brings me to some things that are options on the gold wing that I think should have been standard. The gold wing is not an inexpensive motorcycle. And when you purchase a top of the line motorcycle, they shouldn't nickel and dime you for some of the simple options. Say you want a small LED light in the trunk so you can see in there when the trunk's open. They have one and the kit's not that expensive, but the way the motorcycle is engineered, you feel like you have to start at the headlight in the front and burrow your way to the rear trunk in order to get all the panels off in order to install a simple LED light. The motorcycle has a lot of fairly inexpensive parts just like this that require a massive amount of labor to install. And why didn't Honda install these in the first place? And it would take five minutes to install in assembly and add five bucks to the cost of production when you count the cost of the part and the labor to Honda. My problem is not the cost of the part, it's the labor involved after the fact to get those nickel and dime pieces installed. Honda, if you're listening, this is bad practice. Goldwing owners are your premium customers. You should install inexpensive parts like phone chargers, switches for the LED running lights and trunk lights ahead of time and not pass the burden or cost of install onto the customer. In my opinion, you can easily pay for these parts already with the profit from the motorcycle or install the parts at production and add 20 bucks to the price of the motorcycle. It's a poor way to treat loyal customers who are invested heavily in your company. And all right, enough of that soapbox. I know why they do it, but it doesn't seem fair to me to their loyal customers. Other small complaints I have about the Gold Wing is I wish it had a little more luggage space and I wish it had a little bit larger fuel tank. Those two things should be on every touring motorcycle, and I think Honda could have done a little better in those two areas with the Gold Wing. So knowing what I know now about the Honda Gold Wing, the good things and the not so good things, would I buy it again if I was in the market for something to replace it? Well, without a question, yeah. Yeah, it's a fantastic motorcycle. It has power, it's easy to ride, it has all the safety features you need to help you stay upright. I think it's a fantastic looking motorcycle, has all the amenities of a touring motorcycle and the looks of a sport touring motorcycle in my opinion. This is the second Honda I've ever owned. The first was my 99 Honda Valkyrie. That was based on the engine from the older Gold Wings and now this. And both of those bikes rank right up there with any bike I've ever owned as far as build quality, reliability, and my overall satisfaction with the product. In my opinion, Honda hit a home run, and in my opinion, the new Gullwing is a fantastic motorcycle, and I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it to any prospective owner looking for a touring bike, or even someone who commutes a fair distance and wants a comfortable motorcycle to commute back and forth to on work. So leave your comments below. Do you like or dislike the Gullwing? If you dislike it, why? If you like it and own one, tell me why you like it. We'll also be discussing this on the forums and you can get more details on becoming a member and accessing the forums at mcrider.com. Till next week guys, this is Ken with MC Rider. Stay safe and I'll see you on the road.